new episode, new episode alert, the legendary Jerry show. Why you smile? You happy this week? You happy? I look at you. You what must you have mean got this week? you must you somebody. Uh, all right, this all right. is day three. Don't do me. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'm right, happy right. because I get Le- the legendary. Here. I know, boy. I, when I tell you serious business, I you know I, I know I got the moniker legendary Jerry, but but let me tell you something. Like for real, when it comes to unsung, close. I'm sitting to that. Yeah, if you got if you got to sit in his lap, sit in his lap. He that if he if he just for entertainment. He's single. Yeah. Hey, okay. you know what I'm saying? Oh, but uh, <laughs> we we are really uh, we're sitting here with one of the unsung heroes, mm-hmm. not only of Atlanta, but you know we throw we throw around this culture word so much, the culture, the culture, mm. the culture. <laughs> but this gentleman right here really, really had his hands in paving, paving the way. Mm. Um, my brother, Mr. Michael Crooms, Mr. DJ Smurf, Mr. Smurf, Mr. Mr. Collie Park. <laughs> Hey man, man, what's up with you, man? Damn, I mean, just, good just, to see yes, you, sir, bro. Yes, yes sir. sir, you all right? Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Yes, Damn, sir. good seeing you home, boy. Yeah, man. And you, he look good too. He look good. You, you ain't aging. You look. You, you look, look. You look happy, man. No, you know what he look, you look like? You look happy. There you go. You look happy, you look bro. Little Lorenz Tatish. Oh, Let me wow. tell you what that means. Wow. She trying to. She see how she. No. We can't uh-huh. even get this shit. Yeah, go like, ahead, bro. Look, so yeah. Look, you look real, Lorenz Tatish. Seriously, what I mean is Lorenz Tate has not aged one. Okay. Second okay. since uh, 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 Minister Society, anything like he right. still look the exact same. Okay. And when I see you I'll now, take that compliment. I like Lorenz yeah. Tate. So and yeah. I think about all the times I saw you. Well, you look more handsome than, than Lorenz Tate. Damn, okay. just pour damn, this just pour it on. Shit. No, 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 no. I'm just saying the Lorenz Tate effect. Like you have not aged <laughs> right. okay. one and, second, and, and, and you this know, is definitely reality. And because, yeah, I was gonna say yeah, phones phone on and shit, <laughs> but um, the the thing is. He hasn't aged, but he has some things that go on in this industry that probably could have aged you, bro. Yeah, yeah. Really? They could've. Most definitely. Now, those I mean, you know, stories. anybody who has spent time in the music Woo. business, you... <laughs> you're going to... Yeah. You, you're going to have some things that's going to test your metal. Right. Yeah, that's why right. I quit rapping right now. Already. Oh, you used to rap? <laughs> that's how I even got in the radio. This and that. I'm just messing. Oh, shit. Wait, what? Shit. What? No, he was saying the group this and that. Was that a group this and that? Yeah, two girls. This and that. that, was, that was, yeah, yeah, this and that. was that, they, that. they had some hit, some big right. records in the, during the bass okay, game. Okay, now. I promise I don't remember. Hey, oh, all right. Yes, yeah, this is a, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm this tripping. Yeah, you all yes, tripping. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's how you, we, yeah. we, she, was, she, yeah. was, she, was, she was still in high school fighting that, boys that, on middle school. I was at my age. You know how I was. Okay, that's a Freaknik day. But, but, yeah. I've never been to Freaknik. And we, and I just mentioned something. I said the, the bass era. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know, I'm not pigeonholing because we we know as a producer, as a super producer, you've, you've crossed genre this right. thing, man, right. as far as hit records. But, right. In Atlanta and the South, when that bass game was at its peak, mm. you was that motherfucker that put that put it to the forefront. You know what's crazy about that with me in that era? Because I started as a DJ. A lot of yeah. People, well, a lot of people from DJ back then, Smurf. Know, as, like, yeah. But I was while I was doing that music, I was still a fan. Like I got into wow. it as, as a fan of it. So it was even though I was making records and stuff, I was it was still like to me I was on the outside looking in at the hmm. artists that I was able to work with. You know what I mean? Like because yeah. coming up listening to Raheem and Shadi <laughs> and even Kilo, wow. like I was such a fan of the music that it was just like okay, I get to kind of get on the inside as a as somebody who. As a DJ, you have to admire those artists. You damn they right. Started, for you me, damn right. They they laid my pavement down. So because you was on the road with who then? Which Shadi? Oh, okay, and that was Shady that was just was my MC Shadi, yeah. Atlanta legend. As far as putting Atlanta on the scene, yeah. You was the DJ for Shadi, and this after was after Toomp. Yeah, after yeah, really? was for, yeah. After Toomp, I came Toomp, right after Toomp. Then DJ Smurf. You yeah. want to know what's okay? So wait a minute. Before I go into that, how did y'all meet? Did y'all meet when he was a <laughs> DJ or how did we meet? damn? That's a good question. Damn, brother. Just being. How long have y'all known each other? Do you a, know? For a long, a long time. time. But I, I can't. I couldn't tell you when the actual. Was this, he, this like you just was said? He just we done DJ? met. Yeah, because I was telling yeah. Smurf that well, we, we done, done met, met like at least yeah. five times. But yeah. you know, I know how this industry is. You meet people, but you don't know who and, they and are. And for me, but like when I first started coming around the business side of it, I was up under people. Okay. So when I met him, if I was like with Shadi or something, I was just the, the DJ on yeah. the side. So I. Probably wasn't 
So you don't even remember to people who were like in the in the business right. part. And of you it. know, I, I say it all the time, and I'll say it again. Is one thing about Atlanta's music community is it's a close knit. You know, it can be clickish, but it's very close knit. And a lot of us who have come through mm-hmm. uh, the 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 ranks over the years, we have. You know, like our relationship, we've created this relationship mm-hmm. where, you know, you ask previous people that's been on the show how we met. Someone we can write off, rip right off. But like with us, it was just being in the same circle. And, right. and, you know, and then as you see this brother, he got a great spirit. So, you know, right, I always right, right, like, right. you know, doing business with and just being around niggas that just was good folk. And he was all he always that's one thing I can say. He's been a consistent dude across the board when he was DJ that. Smurf. And one thing, you know. And I'm going to jump right into it like the independent, as you know, is come back to where the mindset being in this industry is the independent way mm-hmm. is the way to go. Mm-hmm. And we'll go back um, to when you first started coming in with your own records and your own artists. Mm-hmm. It, you was doing it independently. Right. Before right. Mass B. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. before P. It was before before P. P. Yeah. Before, much respect to Master yeah. P and the whole movement. For, you know, oh, but, absolutely. But before that. It was these brothers, and you know, you you had a company here, uh, based out of Atlanta, that distributed called Ichiban Records, yep. and a lot. Really? Yeah, and you know, I don't know if their business was always uh, <laughs> uh, it was the best business, but at the same time, they gave us a chance. It, and that's what I was about you to know, say. They gave us a chance, and honestly, to be honest with you, they don't get credit because whether they did the best, knowing what I know now, as yeah. a, as having been a, a label and all that. They gave us for the time the, the best outlet deals. that we need and the yeah. I mean, we wasn't selling a whole bunch of records. Let's just be real about it. Just me as a label, I know what the money looks like. And if you sold a couple of thousand records, whereas if you're an artist, you're like, yo, I did this. But as a label, I'm like, we had to spend money. To right. make money. So I'm just saying, knowing what you I know. I understand more from a business right. standpoint that really those deals technically wasn't. They weren't. Set they up weren't no really for fucked up rich. deals. They weren't. They weren't fucked up deals. But they, we we it wasn't our time to get that kind of money. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. it was exposure. And I can say this after being around all the you know dealing with major labels, mm-hmm. dealing with independents like Koch and and TVT versus Interscope, mm-hmm. uh, Universal, Ichiban Records was run like they had a top notch uh, uh, company. Mm-hmm. The way it was run, the way it was set up, I mean, they from ran a, from their a marketing and promotion standpoint no, from to the distribution. way they ran the business. Period. Like from the building it was in, it was legit. With John it Abbey, and what no was his wife name? Nina. Nina. John yeah. and Nina. Yeah. Abbey. Like they ran that thing top notch. So when I when when I walked into my first real label, it wasn't nothing new. We had already felt that. We had already yeah. been wow. into the man office, sitting back, cutting the checks, and like it was a it was the real deal. Wow. Yeah, and I, I I always loved John. Yeah, uh, his wife is that's something else. But yeah, <laughs> I, I always had, I respect him, but I always had love for because John. that's how I first became. That's how I first knew of you. You know, okay, was from the Itchy Mind Records, the, the okay. albums that you had. Were they right. compilations? I forget what it. I st- I got my deal off a compilation. A compilation, yeah. a DJ Smurf compilation. Well, no, it was a it was a bass. Base, yeah, okay. That they, I put my first song on that compilation. And what was they that? Gave me, they gave me a record deal off of that. What was the first song? Drop like this, bitch. <laughs> ah, that was that shit. What song? Drop, drop like this. Drop like this. Drop oh, like. Oh, that was it. Yeah. Now, now, now what's you know, funny back, is back, growing back. up in South Carolina and going. Oh, to yeah, I know you was. I know you was dropping. You was, was dropping that thing of that shit. Yeah. Hey, you I mean, you were not yeah. just saying. You was. Yeah. You was a young girl. You was. Hey, and it is what it is. Hey, you can't hold my pants against me. I ain't holding shit. That's just what you was doing. Because look, listen, I praise Jesus, but I still will twerk. Hey, that record right. You know what I mean? But I had no idea who who I. I was dancing right, to. Right. And do you think that being a DJ helped you be because I heard you say something earlier and I just I don't want to forget it, Jerry. Mm-hmm. You said um you were a fan right. of these people. So right. do you think that being a DJ and being a fan of music itself and being a fan of the culture helped you as far as longevity goes? Oh, that's the only reason I'm still here to this day. Wow. Hmm. Like because for me it started from a real place. It didn't start for me wanting to... Be on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bunch of likes. Before you even go there, like, even back then, it started It started with me um, as a... You know, my, my desire to be a part of hip-hop was 
from a culture. Like, yeah. There go the word. There go that word. Wow. Back then, it was I wanted to be a DJ. Like that's that's where it started. So now and the DJs I'm right have back. ever been also. I mean, they the they're so important. They're the backbone of the the DJ is the backbone of the culture. Of the, yes, wow. of the culture. They're so the backbone. For me to come from that, you know, from a real place, I'm right back around to it. And now when you look at music in, in 2017, the DJ is the biggest artist yeah. in the business. You now. better say that. So that's why I started. So it's cool. Like now, and I don't have to try to act no kind of way to fit in because I can just be a DJ again. Yeah. And I'm back a fan of what's going on in music and playing what's going on in music. I don't have to force nothing, you know, so it's, it's really, really cool. Speaking of DJ, you know what I've noticed lately? I noticed a lot of artists mm -hmm. have been doing DJ sets. Like, See, I remember, like, bullshit. look, Salon. <laughs> What'd you say? Yeah, bullshit. I was about to say how you feel about... Like, you say then, you ain't carry no crates with no I, vinyl. I, 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 look, look, look. You and then JD, never... like, get a Vegas set yeah, or but, something? But, but JD been DJing now. Yeah, but JD was a DJ. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah but JD yeah, was a DJ. And as we know, the greatest and best producers... Have been DJs. Even Lil John. Lil, Lil John, John. more money than everybody. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. But, but it's it's cool. Like when you when you talk about like the the celebrity DJs, that's just a phase of, of the yeah. game. You know, I don't want to hate on it. You know, you never want to be the the old mad rapper. The or, old or, bitter or ass. Right. Yeah. You never want to be that. You know, it's time to quit. If you become that, just leave it alone. Go do something else. But it'll come and it'll go. But the fact that I'm a, a DJ and I started as a DJ and I DJ for years before I started doing yeah. anything else with music, that you can't take that away. So. Did you have that conversation with Unk when when um I mean I don't know you and Unk's relationship, DJ no, we, we Unk, cool, but, we cool. but did you have that conversation with him when his songs kind of started to die down? You know, because I know Unk started as a DJ. I remember him DJing at the skating ring one time. DJ Unk. And and then the songs were really hot, right? I was mm -hmm. doing radio in Columbus. He was host. He was uh, performing on every uh, radio show. Then I remember it just kind of like died down, right? And it was like, damn, what are you gonna come with after walking well, out? I, honestly, if it's one thing that I regret, but it was kind of—I don't even look at it like that. I have mixed mixed emotions about it. It was kind of a sacrifice to stop DJing to mm. do wow. other, to do other things. That like you deep. take somebody like DJ Nabs. Who never stopped DJing? Never. That's true. You know, they, and you they, look they at how dope they then produce records. They've been all around the world and worked with you, Michael Jackson, Chris Cross, he, everybody. He never and stopped he's, DJing. And it's dope as shit. Go, Nabs go, is you dope. You go see him now. He's one of the top DJs. Oh, in he's the world. that motherfucker. Yeah. But at the same time, to be a good DJ, it takes dedication. <clears throat> it takes hours. Like you can't make more than twenty-four hours in a day. So right. to be a dope DJ, you got to practice. You got to know music. You 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 have to dedicate yourself to that. So for me, when I started doing other things in music, I couldn't. you, you got to take your pick. And I was so into DJing when I was into it, when I saw that it was time. When I wanted to try something else, it was like, okay, I want to be the best at what I'm doing. Right. So, so I, I kept it moving. But fast forward to 2017, mm -hmm. the fact that I stopped DJing, is a handicap for me now because I you have to learn. It's new technology. You, yeah, you new. have to learn again. Like so, it. but but when did you decide? I'm sorry, Jerry. And when did you decide that you wanted to start back DJing? And the only oh, reason it, I said it is because I see Unk now mm -hmm. uh, has started DJing again, and um and and that's why I said I was wondering like is that a because I just feel like you would have been the perfect person to give him that talk. <laughs> well, you know, for me, I took a break, and when I when I said you know. <clears throat> When, when I got my mind back right, it was like, okay, if I'm going to do music, if I'm going to continue to do music, I got to find something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. Like get back to the, I, 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 to the original roots. Dealing with artists and dealing with the A business side of all this, it, this it, made me, it made me not like what I was doing. Like, you know, it was a lot, like like you said in the beginning, that, mm -hmm. that goes along with success. That's why I quit rapping. I told you that already, right? Okay, you yeah, go. So you know first So transitioning from DJ Smurf to Mr. Collie Park, the producer. Right. At what point did you say, okay, I was a dope DJ, but I'm a just as damn dope producer? And what was it? A certain song you did, whether it was for... That's a great question. Yin Yang or whoever before Yin Yang. What is it where you, you know, you a smart, bright motherfucker. So what was it with, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, when you was like, all right, now I'm a dope-ass DJ, but shit, I'm a dope-ass fucking producer too. Well, honestly... 
Because I did a bunch of records before Yin Yang as, as DJ Smurf. Right. Uh, what was your first man. major placement as a producer? That's a good question, too. But mm-hmm. I, I always believe, and it's funny because this comes from an interview I saw with Dr. Dre way back in the day. Mm-hmm. Where it, it, he was talking about not producing outside his camp. Yeah. So I kind of took that to heart back then. Mm-hmm. So I wasn't trying to place records. I was putting records wow. on my people. Oh, that's deep. So my first record. You say your people. My artists. Which were? Yin Yang. Yin Yang. Okay. That, because I was doing records before. Yin Yang Like twins. I said, even all the bass music, that the, the obscure bass records that I did, that were big here, mm-hmm. but didn't necessarily lead, you know, outside my backyard, basically. Yeah, maybe the Southeast. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, Whistle Why You Twerk was the first record that... Wow, big record. That Big record. You know, because it was it was a different sound for me, and it was me stepping out the box of the, of the bass music, but mm-hmm. it still had my vibe, and it, it was like I found something. That was that a big sound record. There, that was a big and record. And believe it or not, we didn't know it at the time, that was the first... That was the first record that really coined the sound of twerk. Wow. Wow. There was there was bounce before then. There was New Orleans hmm. bounce. Yeah. But there was no twerk sound before Whistle wow. Like Twerk. That was the first twerk record. Because the only thing you could compare to it was New Orleans bounce. That is true. Whistle while you twerk. And that was the Yin Yang twins. And what was that was were you still in the, were you all still independent then? Oh, that was or the had beginning. y'all signed? That was the beginning. That was you know That was still Mike Koch. Walker. No, that was Mike Walker. Oh, that was Mike Walker. 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 Uh, 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 Southern uh, music. Southern music, yeah. SMD, which, which was a major He should have been the biggest thing ever came. Yeah, Tangy SMD was back back in those days they was another us. outlet as far as distribution for a lot of artists yeah. locally that didn't have that. Ludacris, okay. Pastor yep. Troy, Rashida. Really? Yeah, everybody. Everybody went through Mike Walker. Drama. Uh, Where is he now? Who knows? Selling porn, I heard. Oh, uh, really? He well, a, well hey, I did hear that's a, a big industry. He was a greedy motherfucker. Just, yeah, it's just, the same. But I did hear that's a big industry. It's damn near the same. It's damn near the same concept, though. Shit, I, somebody, I, I somebody, some, some, so, somebody go get fucked. Tell you something, if you, if you trying to distribute. <laughs> At the end of the damn day. If you trying to distribute. Shit. You stupid. Forgive us, Jesus. If you trying to distribute. Uh, pornographic DVDs in 2017, you losing. Yeah. Which I hope that's oh, what oh, he's that's what, what, oh, shit. You got free porn, huh? But anyway, we, we get so <laughs> okay, so no, whistle no, whistle no. why you twerk was your first major, and that was you were still independent, right? Then. You always still independent, and that right. was your only artist, right. Yin Yang. Yeah, at the, yeah, you really take this focus thing serious. Yeah, so you believe in one at a time. Yeah, I yeah. I, that, I yeah. think because have you ever read the book The Power of Focus? No. Okay, you should read this book. Okay. okay. Uh, I don't know if you read ebooks. I just read a book called The One Thing. You heard of that? No, but I yes, I've heard it. Thank you. I haven't that read it. Book is crazy. I, I'm a, it I'm sound like that. it might be the same type of. Well, it's five, it's five millionaires, mm-hmm. right? Mark Victor Hansen is one of them, um, and uh, he is actually the guy that started the Chicken Soup for the Soul book series. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, it's five millionaires, and they all they give you tools and tell you how their lives changed when they went from trying to do a little bit of everything to try to get rich mm-hmm. to focusing on one thing and mm-hmm. give you steps. It's really dope. So I'm gonna get the one thing. You are gonna get the power. Of so focus, he's right? taking. He 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 was doing that before. Yeah, because I, I heard just, him say you know something what's dope earlier. When, when I read it. when I read books like that, and like you you ter- you turning me on to a book, and uh, I got a lot of self help books. Me too. Um, I very self improvement books, but. I always get a kick out of it when I read them. I'm already doing yeah. like a lot of stuff. Isn't that a great feeling? Yeah, though? But it's, sometimes it's you just need that, need that reassurance yeah. because, like, that you on it's the, right the same. Re- it's the same reason I tell my kids to make sure of who your friends are because, see, when you have a moment and you down or you having you going through something, if you don't got that friend that's like you, mm-hmm. right? That's that's positive, that's this reading, that's smart, etc. then what you gonna get, because you gonna go to your friends or whatever, and so the people that are around you are what's gonna be sewn into That's you, true. so it's like you really gotta watch who's around you. Okay, before so, I forget this, I know this has nothing to do with the price of tea in China, and excuse my ADD, but, um... How did you get a name as the College Park? Because I always thought, ever since I heard your first song, I heard of you. Uh, I said he must be from College Park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. it. Okay, I just Damn, it, it, it was all it was all it was all music related. Um, wasn't nothing street about it. It was like <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I have to say that like for real, and that's why I've never I've never portrayed that, but I've never been questioned about it. Yeah. You know, you know how this this city is. You know what I'm saying? So, but. 
uh, when I stopped making bass music and started dealing with Yin Yang, I didn't know Yin Yang's um, success was going to pop off like that. Wow. And so I really... Had a, I had like a little name that I was using, but it wasn't What was that name? <laughs> right. What was that shit? Now, give us Let that everybody... You know what was funny? What? When, when, I, when I did my deal with, with Mike Walker, yeah. SMD, before we turned everything in, I had went to uh, went to Orlando to Orlando to McGee. No, no, no. Or Orlando, Orlando, Florida. Florida. Yeah. <laughs> to see, my cousin was doing a concert with Trick Daddy. He was uh, promoting a concert with Trick Daddy. Okay. And I was like, yo, on the way back, I was like, yo, I got to come up with I can't use the DJ Smurf shit uh, on the Yin Yang What shit. was the name, nigga? If I'm telling you, this is how it came out. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, hey, okay, Let's I'm like, this, this I thought you was it, it, No, no, it was never meant to be, like, name. serious. Like, I, it was never meant. I hope you like, ain't I'm, about to say no corny shit, man. It is corny. Okay, it's corny, what? It's corny as fuck. It was called Beatin' Ass. <laughs> what is? B-E-A-T hyphen I-N hyphen ass. Like Beatin' beat ass. ass. Beatin' Ass. Oh, I'm, I'm so, so, I'm so glad you are. I'm so, I'm so glad, glad you missed the, you missed the college but, part. But look, but look. And not no damn beatin' ass, beatin' ass, whatever. That goes, that, that ass, that whatever. Goes, to show, you, ass. That goes yes. to show you how God is. Like, we, I, I had no clue yeah. that this was going to do what it did, so I didn't put that kind of care. Only thing I knew is, I didn't want to taint the perception of the project by putting DJ Smurf on it. Got it. Oh, yeah. Because at the okay, time, this was the science. At the time, the booty shake was going out. out. It sure was, and when it, was it went, out. it went out. So I didn't want people to look, pick up the CD and say, okay, DJ Smurf, we know what this is, and it yeah, this is more basic. Well, I'm just glad you didn't this... take the project with produced by Beat Nas. No, no, uh, but, but but it was it was my, it was Michael. <laughs> but I started using my real name, Michael Crumbs. Michael Beat Nas Crumbs. Oh, so when I switched <laughs> to Michael, man, we Mr. So, Collie Park Crumbs. But we so glad that, we that was oh, some continuity. Man. No, let me tell you when I knew it was real though. Like, cause I, I I did it even even when you know we got sued behind the sample on what's the why you twerk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget we about got that. Pe- okay, let me let me. But go you ain't back. famous till you get sued, you know. Right, right. I had to find that shit out the hard way. <laughs> but, but um, so we 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 did the whistle why you twerk. Got picked up by Universal. <laughs> got sued. Asked to be uh, released from Universal. Mm-hmm. Then we went to uh, Koch. Right? right. Which Koch at the time was just signing last leg hip hop artists yep. like uh uh. uh Old New York yeah, rappers, yeah, a lot of new, yeah. like they weren't, they're E one they now. But back then, they was that was they were just throwing, uh, trying to uh, resuscitate some folks. Well, not even resuscitate. Get them twenty thousand of your fans you got left, fifty thousand. Like we ain't spending no money. Yeah, we gonna give you a little money for your pocket. We gonna throw your record out, and then we. So gonna, when you took Yin Yang over there, they thought I'm sure they. Uh, they didn't. They, 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 they didn't realize they, it was gonna be no, as big. Here's it was the dope part be. about it. They did a, a one album deal. Who? One off. That worked in your I, favor then. I bet to this day. Wow. That was the last one off day. Smurf, I bet to this day. <laughs> to this day. Alan Grumblatt <laughs> probably still, as much money day. as Koch and E1 has made, Alan Grumblatt has still got hey, to be like, hey, shit. Hey, you changed their own business Alan, Alan, Alan Grumblatt. You kept the lights on and, that and, motherfucker and, for and, a minute. And, and, and Avery. Uh, uh, Avery and... Um, Monty. And Monty. Lippman. Avery, Avery and Monty Lippman. I played, when I asked to be released, they asked to hear some music before they did it. And I played I, 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 I for them. Mm. And for they Monty released, and Avery. Y- yes. And they, they released And they still released you. They released us. When that shit blew up on Koch, to this day, Avery... Like a love. Avery Lemon, you know Avery Lemon's uh yeah. Universal Republic, him and his brother Monty yeah. Lemon executives over there. Yeah. Okay, no, and, no. and so when when they missed that record and saw us mm. not only go there, but it kept but going. To, uh, it oh, kept no. going. Right? And so we wound up doing some other stuff with them, you know, afterwards, because he wasn't gonna miss shit else. You damn you know right. I mean? So, you know, but anyway, when we came with that whisper record, Ooh. that's when I knew. Out of it, here. it was too, it was mature. It was we was established at the time because that was after um, the salt shaker and all that stuff. Yeah. So I was like, "This is real. We ain't going." And nowhere. that record. That's when I said I need to start branding stuff. And, that's and at that I, point, you were with the meaning you all the label. What label were you all with then? When you, TVT TVT with Brian Leach. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so TVT, I heard that, that's, that's the same one that Lil Jon was on, with. right? Lil Jon, Pitbull. Uh, Pitbull. Uh, China White. China White. Uh-huh. Uh, 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 Yo Gotti was over there. And they there. had a brother uh, by the uh, name uh, of Brian Leach. Brian Leach. Brian Leach was, Brian Leach was over there, and he he had a very good ear, and he was very aggressive in doing business with mm-hmm. um, uh, with people of color. 
people really? that look like us. Yep. He was he was very you know, aggressive. Between Ichiban and TVT, <laughs> those are the best two labels. Top notch. Did you ever think we, you would we, ever we, say the Itchy Bomb would be? No. T- did you ever think you know that what? you would say Itchy Bomb records? As you, as you, because they got such a bad rep out as, here in the street. As you get older, and you start understanding life, you start looking at that certain shit, mm-hmm. shit really mm-hmm. wasn't right. Yeah, it, it wasn't time for us to be rich. Everybody look at the record business and think rich instantly. You know, they just wanted they, to just... They, they, they had... If you sold 100,000 records over there, they gave you a plaque. They started their shit. Yeah, I remember. They, they, I remember. They gave you, uh, what was it, silver plaques? It was... If you yeah, sold 100,000 copies, that was platinum over there. Yep. Wow. Yep. They gave you a plaque for 100,000. I never got one. You now, what? I was shooting to be platinum. Uh, this real shit. This ain't no hype. This ain't no wow. hype. No, whoa, I never, whoa, 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 I never, on, hold on, hold on. As, as an you... artist, I never sold 100,000 records. On Itchy Bond? On Itchy Bond. Kilo, really? Kilo, Kilo did. Kilo. Raheem the Dream. Right no, Raheem wasn't over there. Raheem uh, um, was Andy. Then he went with Electra, I think he did. With that okay. Beautiful I know Ki- yeah, I know Kilo Ali was. Kilo did. Uh, uh, 95 South Oh, yeah, did. 95 South. Vanilla Ice was over there. Oh, wow. But, but, so, but here's the thing. Yeah, Vanilla, Vanilla Ice was on. They Itchy sold Bond. his contract right before Ice Ice Baby blew up. Oh, my God. So they God. had the plaque. <laughs> they didn't get nothing they didn't money. Get, so they didn't look, get so have you ever had an a, a artist that you was going to sign, going to work with, and you was like, ah, and you let them go, and then they blew well, up? I tell you, the, the one artist who, who I, I wasn't going to sign them, but they was asking to work with me, and, and I, <laughs> I, I, missed them off. I missed it. Then after they blew up, I checked my answer machine, and it was on my answer machine. Damn. And said, you what? know, that was sing, years ago. Sing, he said answer song. machine. Singing, singing the song. That, that they blew up with. Who? And I, be, I, I don't even know if I told him this to this day. It was Jock. Where it's going wow. Because, you know, Jock, Jock was with Miss B. Sure was. Sure was. Sure was. So I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't taking it serious. I ain't going to lie. So him and Nitty was shopping it? He, no, I was doing, I was seeing Nitty, him. Was I don't, I don't think I knew, if I knew Nitty, Nitty I, I, had I, had did you? I had a relationship with Jock. Okay. So he was, Talking to me. Okay, like, so no. this is before he did that. The ch- I don't know yeah. if the song was done or what. I know he was on my answer machine with the shit. Damn. And I, I checked back then. I might not have checked my answer machine for two hey, months. Boy. And then you know, wow. that, 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 these kids don't know about no damn answer machine, hey, bro. <laughs> hey, so, answer machine. So nigga. that that that's the one that's you know that really sticks out because most of the artists who I wind up signing weren't. I saw shit before it was time to see it. So it wasn't mm. like everybody was like, yo. Speaking of that, speaking of that. Uh oh, sound like a story. Soldier Boy, out. tell him. Tell him. Whoa. Soldier Boy. Mr. Collie Park went and found this kid on the internet. Really? I'm going to let him tell us. Oh, wait, story. I forgot about that. That was you? Yeah. Mr. Collie Park I found swear. his from where, Louisiana? No, he was Mississippi, in Mississippi, wasn't he? Batesville, Mississippi. Yeah. Batesville, Mississippi. Yeah. I remember when you told me. When How you told, old was you, he when you found him? 16. And Tangie, when I tell you, Smurf was like, hey, Jerry, <laughs> I'm about to change the game. <laughs> I mean, confident down a month. Hey. Jerry, I'm about to change the game. i never forget he was with his attorney, Carl Washington. Yeah, yeah. They was together. Yeah. And he said, he said, he said, Jerry, I'm about to change the game with this one I got. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, not everybody was. I was like, you know, not I wasn't like, hey, right, but I was right, just like, right, I wanted. Right. What you talking about? Yeah, yeah, this the music business. You hear that shit a million times, right? Yeah. He went and got this kid, Soldier Boy. He told me about him. He's like, Jerry, this kid is a star. He a star. I was like, all right, nigga, you know, cool, cool, you know, good luck, you know. <laughs> and, and you know why I was so excited about him? You was excited, bro. You was not, excited. Not only did I know what I, know what I had, but, you know, no disrespect to none of my artists who I had worked with before. You knew he was going to be. Well, here's, something, here's something else. I never had a good-looking dude. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like you I mean, you mean, I you, mean, you, mean you, you mean uh-uh. Yin Yang ain't wanna go do no ass, no model on commercials though? Man, come on, no, man. You mean Kane wanna uh-uh. go get no model on contract, man? Yin Yang uh-uh. twins wanna go get look, man. Come on, man. Look, they just weren't here for that. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, you mean commercial? They, you, right, right. Let's, call, let's say commercial. This was a good commercial. Looking, looking. This was a good looking kid. With charisma, you know, right? He he, just uh, had, he had a smart so, ass mouth too, though, because so I almost that's, that's, that's part of his charisma, though. That's, that's part whole, of the charisma. That's a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother thing. Mm-hmm. But on top of it, that, that doing that deal was like inside of trading. It was like I had a I had a tip. I got tipped off. 
Was it Greg Street that told no, you about no, him? No, no, no. Tell you about no, him. No, 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 no. The internet tipped me off. Yep. Oh, really? Because the everybody, he was on, everybody this was when, up. Was this everybody, when the advent of YouTube? You, no, no, no. MySpace. 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 Really? Adults weren't up on MySpace. You're right. right. They sure right. weren't. So it was like, I saw, I saw what was going on. Wow. I saw it with my own eyes. There was no question. It was like somebody told me, like, yo, you need to buy X and X, X, yeah. X, Y, Z stock. Like you said, inside trading. Right. It was it was like that. It felt like that. So when when I was I was trying to rush to get the shit out, because I knew all I had to do was repackage the shit and put it out. So he was first signed to Collie Park Records. Right. Well, How he, many albums? He sold a million albums on full-length albums, and he sold over three million of Crank That. Damn. He was the first artist to sell three million on, on iTunes. Damn. He was the first artist. And he did. produced, so, he did all his not to cut y'all. He produced the whole first album. Wow. Shit. Yeah. So, so wait, so and, how many albums was he signed to you for? Five. We wound up doing three, technically two, because I didn't even put my name on the third one. Because <laughs> listen, I was getting ready to say, who raised him? Because he couldn't no, have been no, under no, you no whole Let me ask you, why didn't you put your name? Why, why you didn't want, was it starting, was the relationship deteriorating? <laughs> well, or had it, now I can speak more on it because stuff that was going on with him. Okay. And I was in the middle of of, 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 of building a family. And okay. so I didn't have time for all that. For that babysitting, so, that when, glamorized, when, when, glamorized when, when, babysitting. When he, when he moved to L.A., mm -hmm. he was turning, what, 17, 18, somewhere up in there. And so he started growing, growing up. And I was I was doing my thing at home. And I was, honestly, and not knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. You know, honestly, I would do it differently. I would have. What what I what would specifically have, would you say you would do differently? You I got a young have, cat. I, I would have raised him. Yeah, instead because, of letting the yeah. industry raise. Right. Listen, would you say that the industry I raised like, him? I was like, yo, you got a daddy. Hmm. You know, uh, and and honestly, the success happened so fast. It did. He would had a number one record after couple like few months. months. Yeah, I was going to say I months. Right. Two months after I met him. So it ain't wow. like we grew up And as we, And all three of us know this industry will eat right. your ass up and who, spit you who right out. the man that was like his security? Um, I think Miami Mike. Like, okay, so, yeah, so because I'm thinking, I, I met well, I your two I sons. <laughs> Listen, I met your two sons, right? And they're like the same age around when I met Soldier Boy. Okay, mm -hmm. Soldier Boy was on my show when he was, I think, 16 or 17 right. down in Columbus, right? Mm -hmm. And that guy brought a uh, Miami Mike. Okay, and um, I, I literally, he was the first person that I literally told off on the air, and I shut his mic off live on the air, you, and you shut I called Boy Greg Mike? Street live on the air, and had Greg Street talk to him live on the air. I called Greg Street on the hotline at V103, and let, because... When I tell you, he was so rude. And listen, I'm raising boys, okay? So I don't play the lotto with nobody's son. Right. Okay? And he was so rude. He was rude. See, was Smurf, you should have got hold. Smurf, you should have got a hold of little listen, nigga. But listen, so what happened when we first signed him, Miami Mike was his management. And oh, when, okay. when stuff like that started happening, that's when Derek, my brother, mm -hmm. started managing him. Because when that stuff started coming back, we knew what was at stake. Yeah. And your kids, and I'm like, because I'm like, he couldn't have been under yeah. you because no, your no, kids no, no, don't no. act like that. No, no. But, you know, you want to give people an opportunity, you mm -hmm. know. And, um, you know, honestly, Miami Mike, he just wasn't prepared. One, to, yeah, some it, people, it, it all people don't realize so being a manager is just more than, yeah. Than, yeah. Than yeah. more so as I said to, before, had, it's we, more than just being a babysitter. Protect, we had to protect, you know. Your brand, your what you had, yeah. And so... My brother managed him all the way through the first album, and right when Turn My Swag On and Kiss Me Through the Phone blew up, that's when we kind of started. Okay. Kind of, you know. Was it one like, incident where you said, you When he know moved what? to L.A. When, when he, well, the, I can Was say when, when he moved to L.A. and, 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 um, Cause he, he didn't tell you he, he was gonna move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But was it he, something he, he did where you said, you know what, Playboy, we gonna have to sever these ties. I mean, you you go ahead and become a man, and I'm gonna do you know my what? thing. Honestly, honestly, it wasn't a one thing. But when I saw him start, you know, kind of going around and working with people from Interscope, and not uh, telling and you, they, and, they, and they trying to. Do this without my 
input and influence, yeah. and then they weren't even the, even I thought my relationship with the people over at Interscope were were better from a respect aspect of it, and I, I'm I'm trying to you know tell both of them like yo, y'all this ain't how you do it, you know what I mean? And so I've always been like this. I work with people who want to work with me. I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not finna break my neck to because I know what I bring to the table. Right. I've been doing it too long. Like right. I ain't this ain't no luck. You know what I mean? So I've always been like that. So once I saw them thinking that they could do that third album and do it without own, you, I was like, you know what? But I, I, it's on my list. Speaking of Interscope Records. With Jimmy Iovine when he was there. Oh, he was the best. Yeah, Jimmy was the best. That's Jimmy. the best record man in the. I've never met. Smart, he's a, he's a gets it, genius. understands music. But I, it, I never heard. I never met him, but I've heard a lot about him. Man, he's he's the best. He's the when best. you all signed, mm-hmm. cause Soldier Boy was your first project on Interscope. No. P Stones. I don't know if you remember. Oh P. yeah, dog. Oh, damn. P Stones. Was a fucking P. headache. P Stones was yeah. an artist. I, and I, actually, Birmingham, and actually, Smurf has some good ass music. Yeah. Yeah. I remember P Stone. Yeah. Yeah. Had some, so that, you took P Stone, you took the whole Collet Park record yeah, over there. That was my first Was it a deal. was it a bidding war? Did they yeah. the, the check? Yeah, I had a, yeah. The, the, with, I, yeah. I know the check was incredible, brother. Yeah. You so I can see and, the way you oh, still oh, smiling about hey, no, <laughs> <laughs> The way he's still smiling. The way he still smiling. That, he got that smile like, yeah, at, yeah, at that the, check the, was at, good. At the t- <laughs> that check was you good. See yeah, he's, he's listening. Go ahead. That man. check was good. Jimmy was Jimmy was a genius because because at 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 the time, Jimmy was trying to corner the market. He had me. He get all the producers. He had Swiss. Oh, that's Dr. Smart. Dre. Yeah, Dre. He had Pharrell. Oh wow. Polo. He had Polo. Oh wow. It, Jimmy is smart. Oh, Jimmy, Jimmy goes Jimmy, and gets the producers. Yeah. Now that One I thing about, about Jimmy, I like, mean, and at smart. that point, he had all y'all on his roster, all yeah. the hottest producers. Yeah. So I that was makes just, so much yeah. sense because you're gonna because you also gonna if you produce for somebody else, right? Is that still under your deal? But, but no, this the and he had a, we had a sit down conversation, mm. and because at the time he had signed all these producers, but all these producers still wanted to be producers like they didn't have a label. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's so, what I was gonna say. So I was then, and I know that's kind of got to be so, a catch twenty two so when it comes they, to they hit. were they were they were giving their hits. To people who weren't signed to him, and he like, hold on, hold on. So I wasn't signed as a producer. I had a production deal ah, for your artist to, yeah. And, and no, no, I had a label deal that had a separate song deal. Mm. Okay, like Jimmy wanted in. Yeah, I mean, so but, explain yeah. to people that like the young cats coming to the game how that works. Be, being my that label, you had my label deal is one thing. Like right. I did a deal for college. I understand, Park. but people right, that right, hit right, the, right. Yeah. So I'm they're just. But then he does a song deal with me where I give him a, a good deal on some Collie <laughs> Park tracks. For the artist that signed I to Interscope. I sell him X amount of tracks, and he pays me in advance. Low low. In adv- now, I ain't the low low. Okay. Let's just say okay. that. Okay. Let, let me, it's better than the one off. Okay. Like, if, if Smurf was getting 50000 a track, Jimmy would say, okay, instead of giving you 200000 for four tracks, we go give you. 125 for those four tracks. Right. Okay. Right. And you, because we family. Because we family. Okay, but you don't get nothing else off of it? Like, yeah, oh, no. Same, you go, yeah, you're going to get your publishing and all that. You got to talk to me like I right, don't. Right, I'm sorry, but it, it's just, a, it's just a, a good deal. Okay. It's like doing, it's like shopping with your folks versus. Exactly. Right, there you go. Right, right. Yeah. A bundle deal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I did both those deals simultaneously. Okay. You know. Okay. Uh, but, and, and honestly, for as a, as a producer, it hurt. It hurt. Uh, when you because, say it hurt, why did it hurt? Because, the, like, we, we when he did, he didn't want me to feel the need to have to go out and produce, which is why he did the song deal. Yeah. Okay. But Interscope at the time was very... Limited? No, it was... The people were very clicked up in there. <laughs> mm. Like... It was like that for a long time over there. here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So it was like, I was, I, I was sitting here with my money, but... It, and it wasn't like I couldn't go produce f- for outside artists, but I was determined to have a successful label. Gotcha. So I was like, I got to pull back. I didn't need no money. Yeah. At the time, he, he made You see that, that smile, Tangie? I'm saying he, he said, made, You see, he said, like, I ain't need you, no money. Why you that, say that, it again? That, 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 <laughs> he was smart. He was smart in the sense to to take care of his people. Like, That's Jimmy, I'm going to take and that I, I've heard that about Jimmy. Yeah, he's he's you, very you, good at that. Gonna, I'm not going to tell you don't do it, then not take care of you. Yeah. Like, right. I, I, he wants you to be your best. Mm. So it took me like two, 
a year and a half because, like I, I had P Stones, but P Stones was dope too. He was, but it was dope, a headache, but, huh? But it, yeah, they didn't know what they were doing. Like for me, I, I, I'm, I was kind of like Jimmy in the sense, of, like I, I want to empower you. I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to do like I was different from like a Jermaine. Like if you were signed to So So Dev, Jermaine produced you. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, your sound was Jermaine. Like, yeah. what, like I, my, but you, you let you was like you're I, signing I, me, I but you can go get tracks like, from other hell, people, other hell, producers. If, if you came out on 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 Jay Records, you didn't say Clive Davis produced that, right? Mm-hmm. He just signed artists and he cultivated the, the you know. I want to be that. Okay, I know you how didn't, to you didn't have to do every track on right. the album, right? So I, I wanted to get, get in business with people who had their own shit going, and I can enhance, and so. The whole P Stones thing, they were, it just wasn't a fit. So you, 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 fast forward from Yin Yang Twins to uh, Soldier Boy, mm-hmm. and then after those relationships, you, the deal is over with Interscope with 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 Soldier Boy. Yin Yang, they didn't had they run. Mm-hmm. What what does Mr. Collett Park sit back and say then, like, okay, what was next after that? Wobble, right? Damn. <laughs> well, that was... I do it every time you yeah, Zumba. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Wobble, <laughs> it's funny because Wobble was like a great closure to that era. And it was, that's like the biggest blessing. And what label? That was on Koch as well. Warner, okay. Your boy, uh, 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 Kevin Black was over there. Yeah, big Black. What's up, Kevin Black? Uh, it, it, man, that, I don't want to talk bad, but that was like the biggest rip off. That, that was the weirdest feeling in the world because you, when you think of a, a, a label like Warner, you think of like Interscope or Atlantic yeah. or whatever. Yeah, it was a shell of a company, man. It really? Was like, Who was running it then? Was Tom Wally president yep. over there then? Yeah, okay. And, um, matter of fact, they were, they were one of the companies bidding for me. With Jimmy, it came down to Tom and wow. Jimmy. And Looking Jimmy. back, hindsight, you you you, you yeah, think you yeah. should have went back with Jimmy? Hell yeah! <laughs> Jimmy got it, dog. Like yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy, wow. Jimmy got it, and he said something to me that I I, I won't repeat it on the. Well, yeah, I can. But it's not bad. He just said the other other people. Tom Wally used to work for Jimmy, correct? They were partners at one time. It's, it's some guy something they yeah, had yeah, some yeah. something some, some, something, was something they had some intertwining over the. But Jimmy so, told me because you know we were playing the game like yo, we might go over here. You know we were playing, but Jimmy the last conversation when he said fuck it, give him the last whatever the last little shit we was. Yeah. He was like I'm gonna tell you like this. He was like uh, other labels aren't cultural culturally capable of dealing with you. Wow. Whoa. Now hold on, 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 man. I want you, can can you, because I that resonates with me so much. Me too. But even to this day in 2017, me too. Even in radio, let me tell you something. And and the only reason I'll say it now is because (sighs) Jimmy is a real dude. Wow. It's not like it came from a bad place. It was the truth. It was the truth. Wow! Like that they wasn't say it again. They wasn't culturally prepared, capable. Mm. Wow! They they don't they want to get money with you, but they don't want to see you win like that. They want to make money off your culture, right. but they don't really right. respect don't, it and they, understand yeah. it. You, when I culturally saw, capable. When I saw Tam. when you when That's you when you, when you right look at now. what when you look at what Jimmy has done with Dre, I'm done. I, I, when you, when you look at what Jimmy has done with Dr. Dre, I'm talking about hey man. That, in his band, music to the he, BBD he, he, headphones. He walked the walk. The first hip hop billionaire. He walked the walk. He hmm. walked the walk. Like invite you into his house and oh, yeah. really, really out of the mansion in LA. Want to break bread with you? Like want to at the, wife, at like, the crib? Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, nah, his wife ain't get, black. Okay, I'm sorry. I keep trying to get Yeah, we not gonna get this personal stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but his kids are mixed. I'm saying, like, like Jimmy, Jimmy had us. He's culturally capable. He likes the. He really. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. that. I can't. I don't know about that either. I don't have I'm no idea you, about I'm his person, but I know as an executive. On Instagram, you know, he shows his kids. I, 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 see, that's what he was having new kids. But yeah, as an look. as an executive. Oh shit! Did I just no, snitch? No, because they no, on Instagram. No, as an executive, the, the thing is, as a music exec, <laughs> as a music exec. It doesn't get any better than Jimmy Iovine. Wow, that's a that's a big compliment. And I and I've I've had. Lunch with him, but I never worked with him. Wow. But I've heard from everybody from Smurve to Polo. I've had plenty of people tell me yeah. like Jimmy Iovine is that dude. He's the real deal. 
It ain't he no, cares. He was talking about he's culturally he was talking capable. About streaming. He, he, he clearly was talking he's about capable. streaming. Streaming Before back in was... 2007. Wow. He was talking about streaming back then. Wow. Ten years ago. He was ahead of the yep. curve. Wow. Um, yep. Wow. So, so for all those artists out there trying to get deals right now, if, if you have uh, big major labels uh, getting with but, you, but you better, who, but who now that Jimmy, Jimmy is out the game? Let, let, Jimmy's out of the game. Let me let me tell you something. Jimmy well, done moved on. Yeah, he done moved on. Things. But but yeah. oh, bigger and better things. Bigger. But, but better. what I learned ultimately from Jimmy is before I even went over and did the deal with Interscope, that was like the dream. I'd never be able to work with them. Yeah. They they were the creme de la. They they to me from college bar John. You had to be the the rapper on the wall. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Like. If your poster, like back when we were growing up, you had Prince, Michael Jackson, Vanity. Mm-hmm. If your, they had the rappers that you put up on your wall. Mm-hmm. Eminem, Fifty Cent, Wow, Dr. Dre, Snoop wow. Dogg, like even uh, uh, No Doubt, like mm-hmm. the, you go in all the artists, you they they were Black worthy, Eyed Peas, they, all like, I, they were worthy of the wall. Wow, the, it, it, that's Interscope was the, the best doing it, and you still look at it today, mm-hmm. Kendrick. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's still they have a a a a a, a, a quality. They set the bar. Yeah, they, yeah, they set the bar, and so you left off one person. Who? Kyle Park. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just Soldier. saying. Soldier, Soldier was Soldier, Soldier was Boy that. was that dude though Soldier, at one point. Soldier, Soldier was that dude, but uh, 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 do you still but, talk to Soldier? But no. Okay, so here's no. I, I have a question. Hold please. on, let me finish. Okay, finish. Go ahead and finish. Then I, I don't let me finish. What, 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 what I took away from that because after hearing all that and, and growing up, you know, listening to. Artist that artist that he put out, mm-hmm. and to meet him, wow! To meet him and to talk to him, everything that he does still starts with the music. Wow! And that confirmation right there, mm-hmm. to see the success that he still has to this day, it comes from a place of music. All that other shit come off of it. Yeah, you know I mean his love for music. He literally has a love for music, and so you get if if you real if you're genuine with this. From the heart. Let me tell you something that I remember that he said, and and I just mentioned the other day. I was talking with the Dream, and we was we was talking about. I was at a lunch. It was with Jimmy Iovine, Polo the Don, Divine Stevens, Akon, a bunch of people. I forgot Akon was over there too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a whole and, nother and this show. Is, this is, this is, everybody. And one thing Jimmy Iovine <laughs> said that he's speaking highly of another music exec, L.A. Reid. He said, L.A. Reid was the only... He's like, I hadn't even done this. He said, L.A. Reid was the only... Well, I won't say only, but what he did as an executive Mm -hmm. by signing and having five artists have a diamond, 10 million selling album is unheard of. And for him to sell his company, LaFace Records, or what he sold it for was unbelievable. It was like pennies. Wow. You, and then I, I sat there and thought about it. I said, five artists that had a 10 wow. million, a diamond selling Mm-mm. Tony Braxton, Outkast, TLC, Usher, Wow, Pink. Wow. Ooh. And okay. these are, that just shows you how much. And we talking highly, right. highly of Jimmy Iovine. Right. But Jimmy hadn't even done what right. L.A. And these are right. artists that L.A. signed and 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 cultivated. Wow. That's that's how big L.A. Reid and what he's done. And we're right. speaking of Jimmy Iovine on a whole. but And Jimmy said this. He was giving L.A. mad props. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, of course, a lot of people, period, from a business standpoint, couldn't understand how could this man sell his company right. for that little amount of money. Right. Because you remember when Clive Calder sold Jive Records. Shit, what he got? Billion. Right. Billions would it be? L.A. Reid had artists. You Look at the artists I just named. That ain't counting the Goody right. Mobs right. and all right. the other right. artists. right. right. You know, right? So, um, so I know we gotta wrap up in a second, but like, it's two things I want to make sure that we get to talk about. Uh oh, uh oh, smart. You said it when you got here, right? Three, okay, three. <laughs> in. Okay, three. In. You, you said it. Hey, let me sit back now. First thing, um, with with recent stuff that's been going on with Soldier Boy. I mean, I know you don't talk to him anymore. He's not on your label, of course, etc. Okay. Um, and I know you said that you know. You would have done it different. You would have kept him under your wing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could say anything to him right now, 
Like with everything he's gonna with the going in the in the neighborhood, talking about I'm a blood and getting his chain snatched and trying to fight Chris Brown and you know, just kinda like this <laughs> you know, just all that stuff like just like if you could say give him some advice, what would it be right now? Sit your monkey ass down. Advice, honestly, I honestly, said. Honestly, honestly, that would be sit, fine. Sit, sit your advice. monkey ass <laughs> down. But look, but look. But look. I, I I I had an one thing I can always say about I was gonna say Dre I call him Dre Soldier Boy Soldier is that up under all that bullshit that y'all see I never felt felt disrespected okay. by him I he never brought that to me so I know the person that's in there you know what I mean so I I just think. <sighs> What would you say to him then? Right now, if he's listening. He's listening right now. What what advice would you give to him? Keep your I, head I wish, up. I Keep wish, your nose I clean. Wish, I wish... <laughs> <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Stop, <laughs> Jerry. All That's right, shit. Up. My fault, man. Damn. No. I, I, I wish I could, could have this conversation five years ago. I mean, because now it's almost like... Yeah, it's whatever. It's it's too late. But, it, but you know what? Because but, here's one thing that I always gave him credit for that people never gave him credit for. The boy was a great songwriter. Hmm. Wow. The dude, when you look at his little short run, look at the, the some that, big records, man. That whole first some album, big records. He wrote "Kiss Me Through the Phone," and um, what's the song he did with Bow Wow? Turn that my swag oh, yeah, on. Yeah. Turn my swag. Like he wrote these records as a teenager, and he really created the whole internet trend. I'm trying to he tell you. Sure, so, he? so that's the that's the travesty. Of this whole shit, nobody even talks about. It. Could he come back to you right now? Could he come back to and you and do business? I mean, Could he come back to you and the say, "Love is gone"? Like you know, they, it's like an ex spouse. Yeah, once listen, I grew, <laughs> listen, listen. Okay, no this, pun I'm intended. <laughs> no, listen, listen. I'm soldier. I'm soldier. Right? Listen. Okay, Michael. Oh, Mike, whatever she, he calls oh, you. Like, now she, yeah, now she. Smurf. Look at listen, Smurf. 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 Call it Paul. Okay, he call Smurf. Smurf. What he call you? Collie Park, I think it was Collie Park, yeah. Okay, well then, okay, so I'm him, so, okay. Hey, man, Collie Park, man, listen, I done grew up, I done did some dumb shit, but I need, I can't do this shit no more if I don't have you in my life to <laughs> to manage me, to help me get my career back on track and get my life back on track. Can I come back to Collie Park Records? I wouldn't even know where to start with you. Be like, nah, playboy. I wouldn't even know where to start with you. <laughs> For wow, real, that's I, mean, deep. I mean that. Like once it's o- once it's over, it's over. It's like a relationship. Like, once yeah, it's over, it's over. It's, it's too late, for real. And I, I don't say that from a bad place. Like it's just too late. Wow. Okay, so uh, Kylie Par Records. I know you're DJing again. You're back out on the DJ circuit. Yeah, I'm doing a bunch of cool remixes right now. That's like yeah, my I, thing right now. What do you now. mean? So like, like you doing? Like, you, I mean, cause you're doing are you doing EDM? And no, ED, like pop EDM, right. yes. Mm. Like, like I, I've been like, so when I started back DJing, I saw that it was over on the EDM side. So I saw all, oh, these, yeah, that's what all, these, all these big EDM DJs, but I saw it re- really wasn't meant for us to go over there. Like, they ain't really trying to let us People over there like them. that. Like, so I'm just keeping it real. So, I ain't never been one to beg for nothing, I go and get. I, I go and get. Carve your own blood. path, right? Which, which is what's cool. Where I am now in life, I don't really have to. Uh, again, try to force nothing. You and you're at that point so in your it, career. It, where it, you it took can... me back. It took me. I had to find a, a niche again. Mm-hmm. So my niche is, I saw these big pop records like my daughter. Don't even my daughter. She knows hip hop records, but you Those put on ninety six point one. She know all them records. So it was like, and, and all these black kids around here singing all these records that don't come on B one hundred three or one hundred seven nine. The records that when you go on iTunes, they actually selling units still. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, they if they know these records, why we ain't, like the only time they can hear it is on YouTube mm-hmm. or. You know, on the internet or whatever. So what how I, come we don't exploit their culture when they're exploiting ours? Uh-huh. Ooh, I'm sorry. Did I say that out loud? That's, that's oh hold my on, goodness. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Our my culture, bad. Oh, oh, the black culture is everybody cool. If you go to Japan, yeah, but you know if, what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I know, no, 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 no. You know, you know, what, no, you no, know what I was no, saying. No, I know, no, no. Yeah, hold on, hear me out. I know what exactly what you're saying, but what I'm saying is, it, and I'm not dissing, that, but everybody's culture. Is our culture? I know, I know. I know. Everybody's culture is we our culture. If you drop a moon, kid, if you <laughs> drop a kid in Tokyo right now, 
They gonna hear hip-hop. Guess what you go see? Hip-hop. You go see a kid dressed like us. Sagging their pants on them skinny jeans. Listening to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. You drop a kid in wherever, in, in Sydney, Australia. Mm-hmm. Same thing. Our culture, and, and, and what I'm proud to say is, a lot of the culture that's that's going on now, you see how the hot Atlanta. Atlanta really has been hot for how many for the past what right. twenty we done, years? We done took it we, hey, New from York, the dance crazy. You you think about the de- you we, think and and I'm proud to say that I'm sitting here with a brother that has his hand that has, right. that that has been had his hand in the culture that has changed. How everybody, I mean, Atlanta. You really this, have, like, you're, you're yeah, part this, of the foundation so, yeah. of it, really. So, I appreciate you, my so, nigga. So Don't with, start. So, so, <laughs> I appreciate you. No, I said I appreciate you, nigga. Or... Yeah, look at him. I appreciate you, my nigga. <laughs> so, which brings me to now. Yeah. Like, I started, you know, to fast forward. I take the big pop records and I remix them yeah. with, with my flavor because what I noticed was with the resurgence of uh, twerk. When Miley Cyrus came back, mm-hmm. now she done threw it in the trash again. Yeah, now she, uh, yeah, now yeah, she yeah, yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a whole, she don't know she want that's women, That's a whole other thing. Men, but anyway, the, the good thing she did, though, was it, it was perfect timing for me because it was like, yeah. okay, these kids are now, in 2014, I think it was at the time, excited about shit we was doing 15, <laughs> years 14 ago. years ago. Yeah. So I said, that's what made me start getting back into it. But then I said, technology had done come, so they didn't put this shit on steroids. And but what it did on the EDM side was take all the feel out of it. So they put all this technology on our mm-hmm. shit, but ain't no feel, ain't no soul yeah. to it. So which led me to the remixes that I'm doing. Which if I see a, a, a Justin Bieber Sorry record, which was the first one I did. Okay. And I say, okay, this is a huge record, but they ain't really finna play this shit over there. So I put my shit up under it and service it out. Now. Where only the 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 EDM clubs or the 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 white clubs are playing it now, I got urban DJs in the strip club that like Justin Bieber but wouldn't play that record. Wow! I get them a version because hmm. the girls who dancing in there know that Bieber record too. Right. So now I get them a version wow. that or actually goes like LA and and South Vegas. Beach and right. Like, yeah. So I've done probably over thirty of these remixes wow. over the last year and a half, and now I got labels calling. Asking for like I just did one for Good Life for Atlantic, damn, uh, G Easy, yeah, over at uh, you know, it, it's not a lot of money. I'm gonna be honest, G Easy is huge. It's not a lot of money, but, but you what, don't what do I'm it do- for the money. No, 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 it's not for the money. What I'm doing is is creating something. Oh, he worked for the money now. Yeah. Let's not get. Yeah. No, I, <laughs> I know, I know that. It. But it's, I so saying. is it with that? With that, you just get. You know, since it's a remix, right? It's a fee. Yeah, okay, I, mean, I was gonna say you, you just, just get, get your a producer fee. fee. Get a, get a okay, remix fee. So, and, and, so you're creating something which leads me into what's next because I know you're a visionary. Right. So there's no way that you're doing something without having a vision right, of right, what you right. plan on it being. I know you ain't gonna tell us everything. So, right. what's, um, well, no, no, it's it's really a. Well, way was that the question you it, said? What's really, next for it, Mr. Khaled Paul? Right. So yeah. it's it's really a way to reestablish uh, to create the new the new era of where I'm going. Sonically. Okay. So now, if I try to come bring you a beat now, and say, you might be like, nah, man, that ain't really what's popping now. But if I train you, my thing was to get back in good with the DJs. Because the DJs... The backbone done, of the culture. The, well, the DJs done turned this shit into some, something it. else now. No, I mean the DJs still oh. spinning records. Oh, okay, So my bad. Mm-hmm. now they think that they're bigger than the music that they oh. play. <laughs> so my, my science was make myself valuable and valuable to them again where they got to so call smart. me looking for my shit. Mm. Yeah. So which is why I, I done did about 30, 40 of these remixes. Now, if you go on all these charts, DJ, uh, 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 direct music service, DJ City, uh, fucking digital DJ pool, uh, BPM.com. My shit is all over. DJs that are in the clubs, yeah. uh, pool track trends. I'm on all the charts. See, you, you thought see, of, have you have you thought about relaunching Collar Park Records? Not yet. Okay. Oh, but it's coming. Not yet. I, I Wait, got, where got buddy a, at though? Wobble. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, I, don't I, don't, I don't talk to him neither. Okay, that's not right. It's B-I-C. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's B-I-C. what it was. Yeah. So, so to re. But you are thinking about relaunching Collie Park. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta find the right people to work with, man. So for me, I, I don't want to do nothing that don't make me want to do it. Meaning, you gotta find somebody that's that you, a yin yang, a soldier right, boy, right, somebody, a right, artist, right, 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 somebody who makes me want to get back into that side of. Can Can I make a special request? And I didn't. Then we gotta wrap it up because we're getting a rap sign from the producers. Um. Yeah, you have Frank Ski. You know. 
on uh, uh wasn't he on the wobble? Yeah, or yeah mm -hmm, he was in the video and stuff like that. Right? No, he, he didn't make. That's he why I'm video. in the video because he didn't show okay. up. That's all right. Listen, Frank Ski is a, a radio personality yes, here in Atlanta. Is, and a big one, a big one. He was still talk. <laughs> that's good. good. Guy, he good gave dude. me my start. Okay. I, that, that, right that, out of college. So, what you are you trying to say? You want to be in the next video? I want to be. No, I don't want to be no video. I mean, shit. The way that's where you was going. What I'm saying, no way. I was going. Might as well toot that booty up and toot that butt. HR. I'm not gonna let the devil do it today. Toot that booty. I'm not ooh, let the devil ooh, do it today. Ooh, ooh. Uh, she got it too. Look at it. Was, look, don't no, she got it? She can toot that. Question oh, bro, was, come on. You saw that thing. Listen. <laughs> look at I it. She trying to. Be the next radio yeah, she did. <laughs> toot that booty up. Okay, go ahead. He wants you to toot that booty up. But go ahead. He's so much booty in his life. Didn't you hear him say? You don't never. You don't. Hey, you don't never see enough booty. You don't never see enough booty. I'm sorry. But go ahead. Okay. So I'm just saying. Toot that booty up. I want to be the next radio personality in the next song that you do. You use like, Frank's like getting on the record. You ain't had to put them titties yeah, on them now. I didn't. Now. Stop. Shit. Really? <laughs> now we walked in. The man kids <laughs> over here now. Come on now. And I just gave him a lecture Shit, about they women. They teenagers, Listen. man. They, hey, they want no, some titties put on them. No, but I just gave them. him a lecture about respecting women. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> they want some titties put on you them. You don't have no man. Hey, look at it. Like, okay, ignore okay. him. This is not the right way, okay? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. I'm just saying you let Frank ski do, you know, what he did on that. I want to do something on a song. She I'm putting shit. it out there right now. I'm putting it on video, on everything. I would have to hear, like, for real, me and Frank had been talking for a while before we hooked up on that. Okay. And so I knew what he did. Yeah. Like, I have, I had to hear something you do. Like, okay, I had well, to hear I, you. Listen, I still got vinyls. Remember, I was now, a rapper for a All right, so you, are you, 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 you done plugging yourself? You got to send me no, something so I can hear. Oh, shit. Well, you know, I don't have oh, hey, the hey, hey, hey. You see, you know the, I mean? power, the power of the peace. <laughs> The power of the P. The power of the T. You, you, the you, want me, you want me to come over? Oh, there? yeah. Oh, I like that. T the power of the You know what? <laughs> you know what? Listen, I think, Ooh. and I heard you about to be funny too, Smurf. Oh, uh -huh. go ahead, go ahead. I heard you talking about, do you want me to come over? No, hey, that's good. I don't know if you got to Damn right. Anyway, thank you, you for tuning into this episode. No, no, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. we are, uh, -uh. Sorry, time. We got to go to producers rapping us. Okay, I got one more question now. I got one more question before we wrap. Okay. You still get some of them publishing checks, nigga. Nigga. That's our business. No, no, take your arm from that Brian. Is, we don't. Well, well, do, you, do you still you get some? You still good, got some of the publishing chat. I ain't trying to get you, but here's a I good just, thing. But I'm saying, honestly, here's a good thing about making music that don't never die. Them checks go keep coming. Yeah. It's like real estate. That's why you need a wife because I think that's the all right. Hey, hey, you know, I know. Know. Hey, 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 hey